The school's strategic planning in the future is uh, looks at obviously enhancing the education of our boys here, and one of the major focuses we have over the next four years is looking at how we can provide real world learning for the students, something they can't get from just within the classroom. Uh, we're looking at how we can bring our community into the school, experts in the school, to enhance the learning of the boys. And I, when, when Andrew McGuire, Greg came into my office and started talking about an opportunity to work with local enterprises uh, in problem solving, it just ticked every box. And I thought it was just an amazing opportunity for the boys, not just to work with the theory of business and commerce in the classroom, to be able to have challenging real world um, I suppose problems to work with and, and try and problem solve. So it, it just, as I said, it ticks all the boxes in what the school as a, as a body wants to do in the future in, in terms of enhancing the boys' learning. This program is called Enterprise in the Community. Uh, that's the term given to it by New South Wales Education. And the person uh, from uh, that agency who's sort of sponsoring this, in a sense, Peter O'Dowdy, yes, so it's a collaboration really New South Wales Education, Seven Mile Bench Lab, uh, together with high schools and of course local business owners. And I echo Paul's thanks to all our business owners participating. We appreciate that very much. So the program that we're doing with you over the next eight weeks focuses on three really essential life skills. It's three of nine, but I'm going to focus on the three that we're working on together. And the skills are entrepreneurial, analytical, and creative. So enterprise in the community is, it's a different experience because it's, experience, it's what's called experiential learning, which commonly means you learn by doing. But it's a little bit more than that because it's also, it's learning by doing, but it's learning through reflection. In other words, you're kind of you're doing it and you're thinking about what you're doing and understanding why you're doing it. And that's exactly the cycle we take you through, through this program. We now have an opportunity for our business owners to spend a few minutes just sharing with you what their business is about and importantly, what the problem is that they want to solve. And when Joe is finished, our fourth business owner has finished speaking, we're going to break up into groups and uh, we will sit with the business owners and we'll help you dig a bit deeper and ask some good questions to validate the information about this problem. Hi everyone, I'm Robbie. I'm a physiotherapist. I own Sequel Physio and just locally down the road. Uh, we started our business because we were passionate about physio and wanted to create an environment we wanted to work in and offer an exceptional service. We very much enjoy what we're doing, but what we're finding now is we're looking at our um, inquiry rates. Our repeat attendance, our uh, word of mouth, etc. referrals are very high, but our inquiry levels are a little bit on the low side. So what I want to put out to you is how can we increase our inquiry levels and then hence contact, i.e. number of people coming into our practice for our services. Um, my name's Harry McGuire, for those of you following along, brother to that gentleman over there. Here to talk to you about rubbish. One of the reasons that Indonesia has such bad pollution rates is that 70% of all waste generated ends up in landfill. 70%. And so the Thinking Recycling is this project that we're running when we're trying to fix that. And our goal is to reduce amount of plastic waste and overall waste that goes into the landfill in Bali specifically by 10% in the next 2024. And so the challenge that we have for you guys today and over the next eight weeks is what are the initiatives that we can run on the ground in Bali at our one sorting centre that will improve the amount of homes that are sorting rubbish and make the homes that already sort rubbish even better at sorting rubbish. My name's Natalia. Um, we've got predominantly food businesses, so one is a catering company which we've had for 15 years and then for the last five years we've had a ready-made meals business. So um, obviously last year was COVID and the government brought in restrictions to stop any events. So that basically put an end to our catering business. Um, we want you guys to try and work out how we could possibly make the business model more profitable, um, potentially by trying to maybe sell
sell directly to the customer as opposed to the retailer getting $3.50 of our cut. So that's our proposition for you today. Yes. We started off um, with a mission to help kids shine through the performing of creative arts. Uh, so we provide uh, kids, teachers, organisations and schools uh, with world-class uh, creative arts programs. And that could be from filmmaking to robotics, magic to performing arts and everything in between. The problem we have is a marketing problem, which is how do we market to children when we're not allowed to? Our means of marketing is through parents, and to date, all our online kids have been have heard about Startime through their parents. Now, the moment I'm going to introduce Peter O'Doherty, but I just want to say two things to you. Uh, I meant to say before that I want to give you a promise in relation to your participation in this program. I am absolutely confident that if you put yourself in, put your effort in, that you will get tremendous value from being in the program. That's my promise to you. Now, if I don't fulfill that promise at the end of that final presentation, I want you to come and tell me why, okay? And don't be afraid to tell me if you think I haven't fulfilled my promise. So that's my promise to you. And now, Peter O'Doherty. Peter, thank you for being the sponsor of this program, and it's great to have you with us today. That my name is Peter O'Doherty. I work with the Department of Education. Um, the idea behind the program is to bring industry into the classroom. Um, what Greg and Mitch have done, very exciting. We did a really good pilot down in Manly last year and, and looking really to get the, really push the program on this year. So firstly, thank you Greg and Mitch for the, for the great work and, and I know like, I've got full trust in them. Secondly, thank you so much for the businesses. Um, I know that um, running your own business, is, is, there's, a lot, a lot, there's a big pressure on that. So really appreciate your time coming in and, and, and spending time with your local local students and local community. And finally, I'd just like to thank the school and also the students um, for taking part in this program. Um, I think the one thing, um, just to, coming back to what you mentioned before, is, is, is don't be afraid to ask a question. Uh, if you don't understand something, if you, if you want to find out about something, just ask the question. Uh, because the big thing about this program, this is in school, um, we don't want it to be like a, like a, like a, a classroom setting. So you guys are equal with all these people in this room. Uh, so just keep that in mind over the course of the program. And also uh, at the end of it, we really want you to let us know if you like it, if you don't like it, uh, what you liked about it, what you think we could do better as well. Um, it's really important to do that, okay? Thanks very much. Thank you.